Hi, uh, welcome to uh, our presentation. Um, the title of our presentation is uh, Learning Through Experiencing. Uh, my name is Hongyi Douglas, and this is Debbie Chan. We're from the Washington Academy of Languages. Okay, let's move on to the next one. I'm Hongyi Douglas. I'm going to talk about the rationales and uh, projects and activities we've done so far. And Debbie is going to talk about activities and action, benefits of, uh, for all, and in the end, we have time for questions and answers. Now, before I talk about uh, anything, I would like to uh, introduce this transformative learning theory by Mesro from uh, the Columbia University. Uh, what he said was the, the way learners interpret and reinterpret their sense experience is central to making meaning and hence learning. Basically, the key words are interpret and reinterpret and learning. And Miriam also stated uh, that changes, dramatic changes, fundamental changes uh, in the way we see ourselves in the world in which we live is an important, is an essential part of learning. And also, transformative learning can be mandatory and or voluntary, deliberate, uh, random, educational, uh, and or uneducational. So here, I would like to say for our students who are from um, foreign countries, this, this kind of transformative learning is extremely crucial. And I think even for the students who are from this country, um, this is also it's just as important. But for our international students, it's even more important. Because students need to experience, they need to learn, they need to grow, and they need to grow uh, their language abilities and also just as, a, as an adult, you know, be, be exposed to different aspects of learning. And also, uh, self-skill development, they will communicate. Uh, in a very meaningful way, they learn to solve problems and they will do teamwork. Teamwork is challenging for anybody, uh, let alone international students using another language. And, uh, and also interpersonal skill is very important. Uh, how to agree, disagree, get the job done without start, you know, fighting. And also intercultural, because these students are international. They, within a class, we have students from various countries, and then they are here in, in America, so cultures are everywhere for them. Now, this is the moment I would like to think learning through experiencing is very important for our students. So, and also I want to know, I want to say, we have classroom instruction and also we have experiencing outside the classroom. I would like to call that subconscious learning. Uh, because by doing that, by experiencing and having a good time, they improve their language fluency. And also because the teachers are not there, I'm not there, they are less stressful because I won't give them a grade and there will not be a rubric for them to, you know, to get a grade. And they're not judged and they can just simply have fun and participate in Debbie's activities. Now, for my group, uh, the students from Wall, they're international students. So they have their unique needs. For example, they have their beliefs and values formulated in their own countries already, but then they are here in a new country and they will experience various uh, shocks. And so what they learn inside the classroom can be very important, but what's outside can be just as important if it's not more important. So as a teacher, I would like to offer opportunities for them to re-evaluate re the values and then the beliefs that they had in their home country and also learn and grow and expand. And I was an international student, so I absolutely understand the boredom. Because uh, for international students, the, you don't, you're, not, you're far away from your family. So when you have a lot of time, you will be bored. And uh, having too much time can be, can be it's not good. So that's why I would always uh, suggest them to join Debbie's activities, uh, to learn, to get out, and to have fun. 
And in terms of curriculum design, uh, we have some considerations. I would like to invite the real world to the classroom, as real as possible, and uh, create uh, an authentic experience. I put quotation marks around authentic because it's, it's authentic-ish because you have the teacher's scaffolding. I will give, teach them the vocabulary, introduce the activity first, and then De Debbie will take them to various places. So it's authentic with, with lots of support from the instructors, and hopefully by doing so, we maximize their learning experience. And one more thing, uh, this is very unique actually, another unique factor, we have parents. And the students we have now tend to be younger and uh, more sheltered. And when I go back to China, you know, each time when I go back to China, I have parents asking me, so I don't know, my, my, I, I talk to my kids all the time, but I really don't know how they're doing, are they having fun, or are they sad? How much are they telling me actually is true? true. So I would like to think for, because our group of students, it's, it's better to have some kind of parents and school liaison or some kind of connection. So this is the perfect opportunity. And also we have a very experienced designated activity person, Debbie Chen, uh, that parents can actually trust. Uh, she's very consistent. She's also very experienced. She's patient. She has a family. She has a dog. She has children. So it's the perfect candidate for this. And also, when I work with, uh, you know, uh, work with Debbie and also with my colleagues, I realize collaboration is very important. It's the key. So I need to have my colleagues on board, get their support, and also my students need to co uh, coordinate, you know, uh, among themselves with Debbie, with me. So now I know I have a little bit of time left, so I'm going to talk about the projects and activities. So last year we did the Halloween promotional projects because I was teaching a higher level. So I would like them to actually uh, help Debbie, or well, Debbie was kind enough to allow my students to be part of that, uh, to promote. So they, I want them to take charge. It's, it's great teamwork, and there are lots of disagreements, and sometimes you know they can be mad at each other, but that's learning. And I want them to improve their language skill and also showcase their talents. Because while making this, these three flyers, I have students, they are very creative. I have photographers, professional photographers, uh, photographers in my class. I have researchers, so I want them to create flyers. And this is done, these are created by my students. Uh, I, as a teacher, I was very proud. I'm still very proud. And uh, I think Daddy is very happy also. <laughs> And also, we did volunteer work. Uh, I want students to get out uh, because, once again, they're kind of sheltered. They're relatively young. They need to get out, and they, they need to connect with Debbie. And Debbie is very resourceful. So we have this golden opportunity. Uh, my students, students, not just mine, went to the uh, Seattle Urban Academy. They did volunteer work. They feel very proud. So it is a true feel good, a do good and feel good opportunity. And also, we may have future opportunities, collaboration with the school, because they were thinking about inviting <coughs> our students go back to the academy for uh, international or global history month or something. And one more thing I want to say. Sorry, Debbie. I'm almost done. Uh, <laughs> um, the students, actually, most of the students will be in the MBA program. So I want them to not just enjoy, have fun. They want to, I want them to observe, kind of introduce what's coming to them while working on this project. So they will learn how observe how nonprofit organizations work. They need to manage, observe how the logistics are taken care of. And also, they need to be aware where, what are the ways to improve existing procedure. Now, I think I talked a lot, and it's time for Debbie to continue. OK. OK, everyone. Um, I want to talk to you about activities in action. And what I have on the screen right now is a quote that actually I think I just made it up maybe about four years ago or more. And I put it on all of our newsletters and activities information for the students. But I think it really nails what we try to do with our activities. It says, we're here to help you reach your English goal, pick an activity, and let's go. And so the idea is that you know, whatever uh, goals you may have, and for our students it's English, um, we want students to take some responsibility for how they want to learn and what they want to learn. So we always have a menu of activities. They pick one, 
and hey, let's go. And I'm not just saying you go by yourself. Let's go together as a group because going together makes it much more fun. So let's, let me get more into this a little bit. Um, I think I'm talking to a lot of teachers in the crowd. Raise your hand, clap your hands if that's who you are. But um, mm -hmm. my question is, what's in your teacher's toolbox? I know that in class you try to reach students. Sometimes things work, sometimes things don't. And so you dig deep and try to find something to reach your students. Well, I would say, um, I would say one of the things that you need to know that activities are the perfect thing to help you in your toolbox of tricks for your students. And I'm, I'm talking about especially the activities we plan uh, for the outside the classroom. Activities are great to reinforce the things they learn in the classroom, but it's so much more fun to learn it outside in a relaxed setting with friends, doing it for fun. Uh, it's a great way to connect with other students, not only in your classroom, but maybe students outside of the classroom, another class, uh, even with staff like me, or maybe with those in the community. So it's a great way to reach out and network. Lastly, uh, activities are a great encourager. Um, you go out, you realize, like, hey, this wasn't that bad. I had a lot of fun. So your uh, confidence in your language abilities is increased because you actually took that extra step to go and go outside and use your English in a new way. But let's talk about the tools that I found really helpful. Okay, I'm not saying you have to go out and buy a megaphone, but my first tool I would suggest is that you get something to help you get the word out. For me, going into the classrooms, all the English classrooms, at least once or twice a quarter, gives me that platform to talk to students about activities face to face. I have a hard copy to give to them. I pass it out. I discuss what's happening. The teacher's there. I got their captive, uh, captive attention, so they can't really uh, you know, be, be distracted too much. And I, what I like is I get to see who is in the classroom. Who am I looking at? These are the people that I'm trying to design my activities for. So it's good for me to see them, and it's good for them to see me. Because then they'll know that, oh, that's the lady that keeps on coming to the classrooms, and that's the one that I'm supposed to ask about activities. So it's really worked both ways. Conversation starters, when I see them this, I may not know them that well, but I can always invite them to come to an activity, and they can always ask me about activities. Ongoing communication. This is my secret, and I'm letting you in on it. Don't tell anybody else in the whole wide world about it. <laughs> but what it is is that um, ongoing communication, I don't just rely on one time big message and that's it. Students have to be touched in multiple ways and in different ways to hear a message for it to stick. So I not only see them in class, talk to them, I send them emails. Yeah, they probably don't read all that I send them, but I realize that if I send it to them, that's my, my hand touch on them to say, hey, I want you to, to remember this. I want you to come. And when I send emails out, I do use the CityU email, like we all, you know, we all do, but I do also ask those who come on my activities if I have their permission to have a secondary email address because I want to reach them in different ways. If I can't reach them through the school inbox, I want to reach them to what they use the most. So I kind of like uh, asking students for it, and, and they usually give it to me, and I use that just as another way to reach them. And I'll tell you more about that later in my presentation. Personal voice, be who you are. Don't try to sound like some, someone that you're not. Um, if students don't see you, They'll read your email. They'll feel like they're talking to you because you're using your natural voice, your natural style. Um, partner with students and teachers. I always ask teachers, like calling you, like, "Hey, can I come into your class?" Or, or uh, pastor, or not, excuse me, not pastor, uh, professor T. Uh, Nearman. I would say, "Hey, can I go into your marketing class and talk about activities?" Um, so I really need the cooperation of the staff to let me go in and meet their students. And students also ask their friends to come you know, to activities, and that's word of mouth, and that's really helpful. Uh, the second tool is glue. Okay, we all know that's for sticky stuff. Okay, when you teach a class, you want that information to stick, if I may use a pun. And so uh, glue is a great way to build community in the sense that you are applying what you learn in class and outside of class. You work together in new and different ways that you may never have thought of before, and that may open up some new ways of learning and understanding. 
and also make friends and connections and share memories that last a lifetime. I can have the same activity done 10 different times, but it's always different because the students are different. And there's always something a little different about what we do. So it's a memory that they can share together. Um, I love, okay, the third uh, tool is a camera. Students know I love to take pictures, whether it's an, a camera or a camera phone, video or whatever. That is, a uh, picture speaks a thousand words. So those pictures that I take on our activities, I use them for multiple marketing and promotion reasons. I can use a picture from three years ago and use it for advertising uh, the activity again today, or I can use new pictures. And I use those pictures for like uh, our blog, like we have a City U blog. Um, we don't like stock photos, we want to use actual people photos. So I like using that in, in our marketing efforts. And about the newsletter that I may send uh, to all the students, and even past students too, alumni students. I, I like to uh, include sending this, this piece, even though it shows our activities and there's some information, it's a way to keep that connection with current students and past students. And it's a way for me to check their email if it still works, but I really just like to keep that connection with them. Social media, we use uh, Flickr for photos, um, so that's where I keep all my thousands of photos. And social media, which I almost skipped, uh, Facebook is what I use. But if you have different ways of reaching your students through other forms of social media, like LinkedIn or something else, go for it. Um, you just have to touch students in different ways at different times for that message to stick. Benefits for all. Okay, students like to have a good time, and I know they don't like to spend a lot of money, so I try to keep my activities to be affordable. Um, also, I like to have activities that kind of create a bond of friendship and community, whether with ourselves or with some new people that join us. We also have volunteer and conversation partner programs, uh, and we also we are, like myself, I can write recommendations for students. If I've seen them work on a volunteer job, or if they come with me and help me for a party, I can write that for them. And available, accessible, and accessible. I try to make myself that way all the time, on-site, off-site, on hours, off hours. I mean, I, I personally don't mind. I can't mm -hmm. say that's for everybody. But with students know that there's someone there that is there for them all the time, I don't mind being it. Um, this one here is benefits and perks for uh, the school or for us, the staff. Uh, word of mouth and referrals work well. Um, when you have a student that comes back and says, hi, you know that they remember you and, and like you, and sometimes they'll uh, tell about you to another friend. Marketing and promotion is great. And what's really nice is when staff and students get together. And I think everyone in this room that I am talking to <laughs> is aware of something that we call Lunch Bites. Yes. And Lunch Bites is something that we created really is just like having free snacks, a light lunch, offered for free to students and staff about four times a quarter. Sometimes it's a big ado, sometimes it's very simple. But it's great because we've opened it up to our English students, and if not them, to all the other students, and if not them, we open it up to staff. And what has become of that has become like a, a gathering of, of staff members and students just intermixing, and it's been a great time. And they get to eat good food. And I just want to point to these couple other two pictures here. This is a picture of Hassan with his young son uh, who came to visit for Lunch Bites. And it's not like he's our student. He was our student about five years ago, four or five years ago. But he came back because he saw my email that I sent to him as an alumni that I had a party. And so he said, oh, I'm going to surprise him and bring my son, who I remember his son when his son was a year old, when he came and brought him to an activity. So that's really cool. This picture here is myself with another uh, City U student named Hero. Hero actually was never an English student of ours, but I met him at our Lunch Bites party here at school, and we found out that we had a common interest in basketball. He plays, I watch. So we had this great <laughs> uh, friendship come out of it, and now he's a great friend of our family. And so when we went to Japan last summer, he took us around. So that was great. So I have to say, this kind of makes it all worth it. And I want to leave you with one snippet. Yes. This last thing, Sari's story. Sari is a, a student of ours from last September, excuse me, September 2013, quite a while ago. 
and I hear from him every once in a while, but he's on my alumni list that I send my email to quite often, or at least every five weeks, uh, whether he reads it or not. But he wrote a nice note on February 24th. He said, and I'll just highlight, you know, he basically says, hey, how are you doing? And in red it says, I wish that Dave could come back and I could be back in the best city I ever visited in the USA, which is Seattle. Also, I miss everybody in City U. And now he's telling me that he is in his last semester and he's about to graduate with a Bachelor of Finance and Management. And I don't know what university it is, but all I remember is this time when he was a young beginner English student yeah. struggling, you know, learning like any other new student. And look at him now. And this I have to show, tell you. He wrote this. I didn't put this in. He said, anyway, it's good that I still get your email. So it kind of shows that, hey, it's good to keep in touch with students. And that's one of our, our newest stories. Okay, so we only have a couple minutes. <laughs> uh, questions or comments? Uh, 